I'm going to use the SGO calculator to score an SGO. What you're looking at right now is a bird's eye view of the SGO calculator. You can see there's three tiers that run horizontally in this section, and the student scores are entered in this section. So if I zoom in here, you can see that the teacher will only enter data in cells that are blue, and they'll enter negotiated data with their supervisors in red. The negotiated data are the percentages of students that need to accomplish the growth objective in order to score at a given level, one, two, three, or four on the, on the SGO. And the upper boundaries of those ranges will be specified in these three cells. The only other thing that's to be specified for this growth SGO is the target growth that the students in a particular tier will need to, to attain. If a simple SGO is being used, only tier 1 will be used, but up to three tiers can be entered. And the tiers are structured exactly the same. So a tiered SGO is basically three simple SGOs for a population of students that may be of varied ability levels where it wouldn't be a fair assessment to use a, tier, a simple approach for a group with high level students, medium level students, and low level students. So the only other place the teachers will enter data in the blue cell will be in the blue cells over here where they can enter their student names or code number if they're to hide the student names a pre-test score for the pre-assessment, a tier number where the teacher will determine the tier, and a post-test score. Everything else is completely automated. So in this particular SGO, the first thing the teacher is going to specify are the, no the negotiated uh, ranges. And for this one, the lower uh, boundary of the second uh, of the, uh, scoring a 2, which is the upper boundary of a 1, is going to be 60%. So if below 60% of the students in this tier achieve the SGO, then the teacher gets a 1. And then the others are going to be 70% and 80%. Now these could have different class widths. They could be 60, 75, 85, maybe 60, 70, uh, 85, they could be 55, 70, 85, it depends on what is agreed upon for the department based on the needs of the students. Now the level is going to be the same for each of the tiers in this growth objective. So those will be entered and the numbers of students required will be calculated automatically directly to the right of those cells right here. Since we have no student data entered in, the numbers aren't relevant yet. Now for the data, that data is, is entered in over here. As a teacher scores their SGO, they would simply enter the, the pre and post test data. But as I have it right here, I just have it placed aside. So the teacher would score their pre-assessment, enter that in, uh, place their tier numbers and then in May they would give their post test as soon as they enter that in the SGO would be scored for them so they can they can uh, manually enter those in in this case I'm going to paste the values they could also transfer values over from another form that they had the data entered in and now all that needs to be specified is the target improvement which in this case I have for the example for the high tier of 15% improvement is the goal for the high tier students. The middle tier students, their goal is a 20% improvement. And the low level students, the lowest level tier is going to be a 25% improvement. And with each of those levels of uh, improvement, you can see that the the high tier in this group, which consists of 10 students, needs 7 to achieve the SGO to accomplish that. In this case, 7 are actually achieving, so the teacher score is a 3. 
if the SGO was instead of 15%, it was to be only a 10% growth, that would be a less ambitious goal, which would be easier to accomplish. So the teacher would score a four because one extra student would have achieved uh, at only uh, at or above 10% growth and that would have been enough to bump the teacher up to a 4 in this tier which as it is in this case would make all the tiers be a 4. Now if this uh, teacher had set 17% as the high tier growth level then their high tier would score a 2 because of the, the small number of students in that tier. But having even scored a 1 with a 20% growth in the high tier, the teacher score is still a 3.2 because the most highly populated tier is tier 2, which has 23 students in it, which is scoring a 4. Now if we were to alter the, the growth percentage there, then uh, the score would change as well. And with a high number of students in Tier 2, that would substantially affect the score. Now, as it is, uh, the, the values of the SGO aren't as important so much as the fact that the calculator can uh, do all the necessary calculations. With this tool, teachers can save time in scoring their SGOs and administrators can be confident that the SGOs are scored accurately and consistently and fairly so that they can minimize errors and maximize the focus on the actual goal of the SGO which is for the teacher to have quantitative measures of student performance that they can base their instruction on.